We're up here with makeup on our faces and our rehearsed attack lines, playing roles in this reality TV show. It's one reason why we elected a reality TV star as our president. Andrew Yang there questioning the whole idea of these primary debates. So we're two days, narrowly six hours and 20 candidates later this week. Let's get a final checkup on the performance of the moderators who have to lead us through these evenings. Let's bring in Fox News media analyst, host of Media Buzz, the one and only Howard Kurtz. All right, your take for tonight, Howard. Well, the CNN moderators didn't have to work as hard as last night because these Democrats came ready to rumble. The heated debate, and it was very heated for much of the night, uh, really turned on the counterpunching and the personal attacks, not so much questions. Now, the moderators made a decision early on to give a whole lot of time to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to continue their slugfest. We saw a much more energized and prepared Joe Biden. And in my view, that was the right decision because those are the two top contenders on the stage. And here's Dana Bash with pointed questions for both Senator Harris and the former VP. Vice President Biden's campaign calls your plan, quote, a have it every which way approach and says it's just part of a confusing pattern of equivocating about your health care stance. Vice President Biden, you just heard Mayor de Blasio, he said in the past that Democrats who want to keep the private insurance industry are defending a health care system that is not working. That was sort of like waving a red flag, and then the bulls came charging, and then they took each other on, which is what you want to see in the debate. It shouldn't only be about the moderator's question, Shannon. Yeah, and, and Howie, they talked a lot about immigration tonight, among other things. Of course, health care, that big first focus. Um, they got into issue, issues of busing and racism and, and the economy. Uh, they covered a lot of ground tonight. Yeah, and some of the questioning came from the liberal opinion host on the panel, Don Lemon, who, of course, was um, was ripped on Twitter by President Trump, who called him dumb as a rock after last night when he basically called the president a, a bigot. Lemon was a little more cautious in his uh, racial rhetoric tonight, although he did refer to the what he called the president's racist tweets on Baltimore. He did ask uh, Kamala Harris about uh, immigration and whether she was for open borders. Take a look. Senator Harris, you have indicated that you don't think it should be a, a criminal offense punishable by jail to cross the U.S. border illegally. How do you respond to Senator Bennett? Well, again, with all due respect, you know, I, after the last debate, for example, I went to a place in Florida called Homestead. And um, there is a private detention facility being paid for by your taxpayer dollars. What you saw there was Kamala Harris completely ignoring the question, never responded to the question about open borders. Lemon didn't follow up. This is where a moderator has to say, Senator, Governor, Vice President, you didn't answer the question and ask it again. Yeah, it gets a little tricky because there were several questions. It seemed like no matter, even last night we saw some of this, even with the follow-up questions uh, to them sometimes saying, we didn't answer what we asked you. Uh, it seemed like there was a lot of that tonight. But a really good candidate will be able to take any question and turn it into an opportunity to give the answer they wanted to do. Um, who do you think did the best of that? Because, again, we saw that with Senator Harris, as you just pointed out there, but all of them seemed to take a swipe at doing that if there was a question they didn't really want to answer. Yeah, I mean, politicians are very practiced at that. Look, I think that Joe Biden had a far better night than last time. Uh, and Kamala Harris, for the first time, was on the defensive at times, not just when Biden would point out things about her record, uh, but as we saw earlier, Tulsi Gabbard doing that to her as well. In, in the whole second hour, it was sort of like everybody brought out their bazookas and were firing off their oppo research. So you had uh, Biden in, in, in defending his own very long record, uh, questioning Cory Booker when he was mayor of Newark, uh, others questioning Kamala Harris when she was California attorney general, Kirsten Gillibrand pulling out an old op-ed in which uh, Biden appeared to uh, raise questions about women working outside the house. And then he came back and said, look, I was a single father uh, for five years after my first wife died. So the, they were very well prepared and it made for good TV. It wasn't as um, much of a wonky seminar as last night. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. I think people like to see these candidates mix it up. That's how you take their measure. A little hard to follow the details when the charges and counter charges were flying. But people, I think, got a good sense of these contenders. Yeah, and as you noted, a lot more personal stories and anecdotes from a lot of the folks tonight. Howard Kurtz, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Great to see you.